Exciting day for us, and, and we've been at it for four weeks of drill work. Now our calendar through the NCAA changes, we, we can now enter a, a segment where we have 20 hours a week versus the eight hours a week. And the most critical part of this for us is calibrating the arms and getting everybody back in a functional manner so that they can have a team practice. And, and we need that ramp up when you look at summer ball and, and guys were Team USA, summer ball, some guys were not playing. Trying to get everybody back on the same page in terms of bodies underneath them, legs in shape, and then clearly the pitcher's arms, the most critical part of the ramp up. We wanted to make sure we were ready to get to today. And the next couple practices will prepare us to scrimmage and then you have a chance to play two outside fall scrimmage games. Those are exciting days. Clearly a lot of inner squad that goes on in the fall that's very important to the program as well. The guys are excited. Just watching the preliminary drill work, I feel like the athleticism of the team is something that has stood out to me. I think the, the raw speed, the ranginess of the outfield, the athleticism, very apparent. I think we've accrued some catching depth. There's always a quest to have pitching depth at every level of baseball. I think we have checked those boxes. Staying healthy on the mound is always a critical part of it, and everybody that follows baseball knows sometimes that's a difficult task to keep everybody on the pitching staff at any level, major league level, minor league level, or college, or high school for that matter. Keeping everybody healthy and able to pitch is a challenge, and that's another reason why we built in some time to get the arms up to speed so that we could practice and then you piggyback that into scrimmages. So that's where we are. Coming off an exciting season, we need to do some things better. We need to create more pitching depth and execute better. We need to play more sound athletic defense. And we're gonna need to run the bases and bunt better. Each team is different. It, it has to be, and when you have the transfer era, you see roster movement that's more drastic than it was five or 10 years ago. So how quickly we can assess what the individuals need and what this team actually looks like, then you start to pivot to how do you put this into play, who belongs in what positions, who belongs in what roles on the mound. There's a segmented approach that you have to have to identify what the team looks like and then you start to, to move in a direction of, of how that team functions on the field together. We're clearly in the preliminary stages of that, but it's exciting and every time you walk out there, you learn things about your personnel and the culture and you hope you put your best foot forward when the calendar flips and you're, you're looking at February. You felt like the emphasis this summer was on pitching versatility and outfield athleticism. Just how much did that have to do with the end result in Omaha and, and trying to get better at some things and maybe not go the way you want it to there. The quest for pitching is the biggest challenge you have. You, you have to develop, you have to recruit, and you have to groom elite level arms. And then the depth of the arms and the health of the arms is also a real part of that. We battle the draft and to tell you the number of players that we were dealing with to land on a roster in that locker room that is at 40, it would blow your minds if I told you the number of players between last year's team and the recruits and the players that we had in the fold before you get into the transferring and the draft. It's mind blowing, really, the number of people. So I think we've put our pitching in the correct space in terms of the roster and the depth. I think we have a nice split of lefties and righties. The athleticism, the, the outfield athleticism, the overall experience in the infield and trying to continue to become more athletic and deeper even behind the plate, I think we solved some of those. Now in terms of the execution and the personnel and how this looks and how well we perform, that's where the rubber meets the road. But the recruiting, the evaluation, the recruiting, those are two separate things. How that unfolds puts you in a position to have what you want in the locker room. Then you have to move along from there. You obviously lost a ton of production offensively, but you also lost some really good leaders, Tibbs, and some other guys that, you know, just from a, from a 
chemistry or locker room standpoint, like how do you, you have to be intentional about how that develops or do you have to kind of let that develop? I think that has to develop. Now, your returning players clearly guide the new guys. And in some cases, if you look back, it was probably the older players guided the younger. That's not necessarily the case. Like in, in this world of athletics, sometimes being in the program for a while may not make you the oldest. When you have transfers and grad transfers and people that come in that need direction on how we do things. We're in that stage. I think the true leadership in the locker room is something that will develop throughout the fall into the preseason. And then once you start to really get into the meat of the schedule, I think the leadership organically forms. And it's not something that I really try to force. I think that has to be something that, that blooms in that locker room and reflective of how the guys view it. Is there anyone who have really um, embraced that leadership role in particular? Well, it's, it's early, but clearly Jamie Arnold, Jackson West, I think you'll, you'll speak to them here shortly. Lodis, Max Williams, Holtz. You have guys that have been through it that, that work very hard. Those two things set the foundation and then how you carry yourself every day in the locker room, on the field, off the field. Again, th those things tend to work themselves from start to finish leadership-wise on their own. And I think it's probably a little early, other than who is on the team again and who perform well, to figure out where that type of leadership may come from. It'll come. I, it's, it's hard to assess today who that is. Since you've been here, you, you pushed guys to go play summer ball and it did pay dividends last year. Some guys had a good summer again this year. Just how much do you think that can help them develop and grow confidence? Tons. And you have to create your own avenue to work in the summer. The facility is, in most cases, not quite like this. So you have to dedicate time and effort to make sure you're getting your work in aside from the game repetitions. And you're standing in a beautiful weight room. And, and our guys are able to go across uh, the walkway and lift in the football locker room. You're not going to have that kind of access in summer ball. So the innings on the mound swinging the wood bat, running the bases, and then finding ways to mature and learn how to do the work that this facility may create an easy method. You have to work at that sometimes in your summer league. So I think it, it really helps the players mature. And when they get back, I think there's more of an appreciation for what we have here than maybe what you see when you're having to hunt that down on your own in the summer. Coach, last offseason you were putting in some new coaching staff pieces. How important is that continuity for this offseason? It's great. When we walk in the meeting room today, and we, we meet all the time with the team, but this is one of the first times the whole group has been in there, and clearly the first time before we walk out to practice. To have consistent voices, and, and for me, quite frankly, the ease of here's today's practice plan. Then I pulled out the first practice plan from last fall, very similar, but for Ty and Micah to just take that and run with it, and Rob and Drew Linder is here as our director of operations, and he's been in the program before and really knows my language through working with Ty so much easier, then that messaging gets to the players much more efficiently. So it's really, really nice to have that, and our players are fortunate to work with the coaches that we have. Coach, you lose Tibbs, you lose Cam Smith, you lose Jaime Ferrer. You lose Daniel Cantu, when you're talking about the, the eternal quest to find arms, do you just feel confident about the bats you have, or is it, is it just easier to identify offensive talent and it's not as much of a concern for you? Well, I think going into it, there were some expectations that we were not going to have a lot of those guys back. Okay, so you start to put the pieces together and look at how you can reset the lineup. I, I don't know that you can look at trying to match what one team does and flip to the next year and try to maybe statistically match it. But in the recruitment, you're trying to get the best personnel that you can recruit to get in that locker room and build the roster. And I think what we found is some of the returning players are gonna be more physical and more mature and more experienced. But then some of the guys that we have added, they may have different skill sets than some of the kids we lost. 
but it doesn't mean that you can't weaponize different parts of your offense to create a functional unit. And I'm not going to try to push the way things looked last year offensively. I have to be fluid enough to understand that we're going to have to run the bases better. We're going to have to bunt more. We did not bunt a whole heck of a lot last year. I think when you look at this group, the base hit bunting and some of the squeezes and some of the other things that I have enjoyed doing in the past may percolate back up. We hit a lot of home runs last year. I think there's, there are going to be some surprising power potential athletes here. But how the offense forms, I just have to feel that out a little bit. But, but clearly there are some dynamic individuals that are not here. Our job is also to continue to create those. Our expectation in this program is we're going to develop people that are capable of being first round draft picks and future major league players. And I think that's what you saw last year. When the dust settles on this, I hope that we can say that we repeated that on the offensive side, and, and I know I do talk about the focus and the emphasis on pitching because that is so critical. I do think we've covered our bases athletically to put some semblance of an offensive unit together, piggybacking off of how athletic defensively we are, and I think we're going to be really better at that this year. It's like a year in planning, though. Like you anticipate losing all these guys. So like last yes. year you brought in guys with the anticipation that now would be – Right, but – it's hard to statistically say, okay, this player is going to plug in and pick up what Tibbs did. It may be a different sort of offensive play. It may be a different look, and, and that's natural because you're never going to be able to cookie cut how you want this to look. Now, trying to cookie cut arm depth and that sort of thing, I, I believe that's probably why I come off as focused on the pitching because – that is so essential. If you don't have depth there and quality there, you're gonna you're gonna have a tough time. If you can pitch and play some defense, you find yourself in these games and offensively, you try to figure out ways to pressure and score. So that that's how I look at it. Lighter, Lighter went down halfway through last year and wasn't able to get back on the mound. Just what's his status entering the fall? It's tricky. You know, you try to reboot these things and rehab these things. It's been an ongoing process for him. And, to document the hours that he has spent and Phil and Dr. Mejia to try to rehab this and get it right for him and to get him back on track to get back on the mound, it's very, very difficult. So when I talk about the health and the ramp up of the arm and the maintenance of the arm, you can do everything right and still have some athletes that, that come unglued and just the aggressiveness and the velocity and the strength and the power with which modern day pitching is functioning at. It's very aggressive and it's difficult. I hope he gets back. It has been very tough on him and the mental endurance of having to sit there and rehab since shoot, March 28th. Is that the last time he was on the mound? These are not these are not easy things and knowing the upside he has and where this thing could go for him down the road, you hope it gets right one way or another and we don't have a clear answer yet. Kyle was going to show a lot of potential with a young guy last year. What do you see him fitting in? What have you seen from him since the end of last season? Fisher, he could play anywhere on the field. He's a baseball player, and we love that. And, and I think a lot of our infielders are in that bucket. But Cal has played summer ball really every inning, even after his high school year. He stayed in the Northwoods League up there and played and then did it again. So I thought it was a great entrance for him last year to get some time as a freshman and watch this and be involved in this and learn from this and then go play again. He just continues to grow and develop. And he's a, he's a beautiful player. He enjoys the game. He understands the nuances of the game at every position. So he's wise beyond his baseball years and, and clearly is going to be a huge part of our team and our infield. Now, regardless of what position it is, he's very savvy and, and handles himself well at any of the spots. Coach talks about seeing Cam and changes Kind of getting elevated in the minors and just continue to work the way out there and get into the major. Yeah, it's great. I want our guys to leave here, walk into the professional world, and feel prepared and that they can function. And we do talk a lot about what it takes to transition into that world and then function when you're playing the game every single day. We play a lot, but when you get into the professional arena, it's six days a week and it's 
for six months. It is not easy. So they got a taste of that. And for them to tell me, Coach, I felt like I knew exactly what to expect. I felt like I could go onto the field and function. I felt like I knew more about how to manage at bats. That's the best thing I could hear from them. And to have those guys come back, they're on the field right now, to, to see that they enjoy being here and this is home to them, that's refreshing. It's really one of the reasons you coach and that have Jaime and, and Cam and Tibbs express the gratitude for the structure and the support that they had goes a long way for me. With a guy like Jamie that, that threw the amount he threw last year, and you know what you have with him, just how do you balance that build up versus maybe just trying to protect him a little bit, or is it just trying to ramp up just like everybody else? Great questions, Brett. Um, <laughs> well, I think he threw five or six innings with Team USA, so you you have a good spring, you have a short summer with a lot of eyes on you. What is the right pathway to getting him on the mound to let him see some hitters, but in a control amount. Like some of the young arms, they need to throw here and we need to see a lot of the metrics and the video and the development. He's probably in a little different bucket because there's things we want to work on with him. But I think again, like the summer, it's probably in a five or six inning workload. And there are guys that may throw 12, 13, 14, 15 innings this fall. Um, we were a little slower in ramping him up, but I think the idea was to give him some look at live hitters so that stays in the field so that your work is based on what you see when you're pitching against live hitters. I think that is important, but clearly we're going to manage that and it's not going to be to the extent workload-wise that some of the other pitchers will, will endure. Coach, I'm not sure how much you can uh, comment on this, but with the house settlement and possibly 34 scholarships for a baseball team, does that affect anything that we do in the recruitment aspect or a team building or anything like that? Well, we talk about this a lot, and there is a lot of movement in where this actually lands. When I tell you how challenging it was to put a roster together, when you look at the draft, the draft of the incoming players, which is unique to baseball, like the high school soccer players and softball players and football players are not drafted. We have to deal with that. So roster management is a challenge. So I think the number that you land on, we're so far from having to deal with that. You know, we haven't had the, the November signing period yet. We forget about getting into the transfer cycle later in the summer. For us right now, the roster number probably changes. The scholarshiping probably at some point in this changes, but it's so far down the road for us in what we deal with with baseball that it's not a focal point of ours today. Time for one more. 